everybody. Welcome to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matthew Weber. I'm joined by Martin Burke. Hi, Matt. You're right. Uh, we're a day late. I don't know if we're a dollar short, but we're definitely a day late. We started. We were like, what? Maybe a minute into this yesterday, Martin, and all of a sudden, yeah, thankfully, Matt has no lights. Like completely, completely dark here, and um, that was not a good experience. But it happens when you live in the boondocks. Anyways, so uh, this is the Linux Cast. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the Linux Cast on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at MTWB. Uh, Martin is Martin Twit to you. The link to that will be in the show notes. You just click on that. It'd be much easier typing it out. Uh, you can also follow all of our feeds and stuff on the Linux uh, at the LinuxCast.org, and you can email us at the LinuxCast at gmail.com and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Linux There's just tons and tons of places where you can find us. You should definitely subscribe to us on YouTube because I've been putting up a few videos there. That's kind of nice. Um, it's been pretty fun. Um, anyways, so this is our first week where we're actually going to through, go through and do our proper show structure. We started out last week where we, you know, just kind of did the get to know you kind of thing and, uh, talked about our favorite apps this time we're going to have a, a, a news link and then we'll talk about our main topic which our main topic today is about nvidia buying arm and its impact on linux so uh just one news leak not just one news link this week which is mine um ubuntu 2010 is either out or very close to being out within the next couple days and it seems like this is a pretty big release for an off lts release this time um mostly it, it seems like you know, when Ubuntu chose GNOME instead of KDE after they abandoned Unity, they, uh, you know, I, I was really sh- kind of shocked at that because GNOME sucked. I mean, it was bad. It was <laughs> slow. I mean, it, you couldn't run on low-end machines, like, at all because those animations were just god-awful. Uh, but n- now the last few releases releases have just been so snappy. Um, it's, it's too bad it's still... F- but ugly. <laughs> well, have you um, had a chance to look at 2010 yet, Martin? I've had a quick look on a couple of the YouTubers. Um, it's definitely colourful, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it usually <laughs> is. They, they, they I mean, really be... like those bright colours. I mean, that, that's what put me off about Ubuntu, to be fair. The um, no, I'm desktop, it was just absolutely it just crawled on any of my machines. I mean, I, I'm not. Not one for top spec machines, but it, j- it just crawled on whatever I, I used to try it on. And to be to be fair, when I put it on my um, newish, I say newish, nine years old uh, desktop, it was still looking rather um, sluggish and slow. But I mean, KDE have up their game definitely. That that that's that's what I'm currently using, and I've not had any problems. Touch wood. Yeah, um, I, I always am more excited about the the Ubuntu flavors than I am the straight standard uh, from Canonical, you know, version of yeah. Ubuntu. Like Ubuntu and Mate has always been really great. For some reason, on my old computer before I built my new one, uh, Mate always like crashed after the first update, which is weird. Um, I, I haven't tried it since because I've been addicted to uh, window managers, but <laughs> I. I usually have Ubuntu running on my laptop, which is, um, for whatever reason, just because it's kind of nice to keep up to date on what the big player in Linux is doing. Um, it really does look like they're focusing on speed on this one, so it'll be interesting to see how uh, much snappier this is. Um, it comes with the new version of GNOME, it comes with uh, uh, the new Linux kernel and a whole bunch of stuff. I One thing I really want to try out is something that came out last october is the the um the new file system what's it it's not i always it starts with a z anyway it doesn't matter um i always call it zsh which is not that's the that's the shell uh, so anyways i want to try that out and see see what uh f- features that has because i've never tried anything other than ext4 on on linux uh, so be yeah i've tried but i've tried uh, butter fs uh, that, that that seems fine um, I mean, if it's good enough for Facebook to trust on the servers, <clears throat> and especially with like snapshotting and things like that, it, it, it's really quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely have to. I've never looked at ButterFS either. I'm, 
And I've really experimented with vial uh, systems before. I mean, uh, other than I have a couple external hard drives that have to be NTFS because I use them on Windows. Because Windows can't, yeah, can't yeah. read EXT4, <laughs> which is dumb. But yeah. whatever. All right, so that was our one losing. Let's jump into the main topics. No, so this is uh, maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago now. Uh, NVIDIA, I mean, there's been rumors for like a month and a half, maybe a little bit longer, that NVIDIA was going to buy ARM. And about two weeks ago, it actually happened. For $40 billion, NVIDIA has bought ARM. <laughs> now, one of the things that you'll know about ARM is that it's kind of a it's, – they're not an open source chip manufacturer, but it's more of like a um, – ARM itself never actually manufactured chips. They just uh, license their design or the ability to design on their platform to yeah. other companies like Apple and Qualcomm and, and Samsung. Uh, and now it's going to be owned by NVIDIA. So what I want to talk about today is how this um, could infect, could infect, could affect uh, Linux and uh, open source development. Because ARM has been a, I mean, in traditional Linux fashion, ARM has been there for. I mean, we've Linux has been doing ARM for quite a while, like with the Raspberry Pi um, and other single board computers. Those are all RISC-based um, processors, um, and that's what ARM basically is. Um, so, is what do you think? What do you? What are your thoughts on uh, Nvidia buying ARM, Martin? It's a bit of a marmite one. I mean. You're either for or against it. I mean, they're, they're very forward-thinking, NVIDIA. I mean, um, they've, they've built themselves up across the years um, with a graphics card. Someone else had come out with a graphics card with special rendering or 3D graphics. So they're just, oh, we quite like that. We'll buy the company. So they bring those on board. Then they bought other people on board. Um, so, I mean, they're definitely bit business-focused. And I... It will definitely be interesting because obviously they want to break into the well, they are in the AI market anyway. But ARM will give them the Internet of Things. ARM's got so many licensees that that that, that are um, obviously licensing their chips to. Um, it's it's just going to be quite interesting to be fair. I mean, obviously there's going to be some um, damage along the way. There's going to be obviously. Uh, Nvidia won't want to do business with this or that, but I think that's all comes back to the antitrust issues and things like that and monopolies. Yeah, it, I mean, um, go ahead. Um, I mean, I, I was looking back through, and I, I, I didn't, I didn't realise that um, actually, um, Acorn, which is a British. A computer manufacturer uh, from way back in the late 70s actually designed the um, the architecture and it was called the Acorn Risk Machine Architecture, obviously ARM, um, and the first use of products in the uh, BBC microcomputer, which was mainly an educational computer here in Britain. I, I don't think you've ever heard of the BBC Micro over that side, have you? Mm -mm, no. <laughs> Yeah, and they've, they've just took it from there in their architecture. Yeah, our computer history over here pretty much ignores anything that wasn't made here. So, uh, I mean, you got you know, Americans, right? So, uh, we uh, it's IBM over here. That's IBM and Hewitt Packard. That's the computer history that we pay attention to. Um, <laughs> it's uh, well, you know, I can see good and bad. So, I mean, when you first see this like you know oh no this is not a good good thing like this is gonna end badly for the arm standard or whatever um but and, and there's a good possibility that it, it does that way because on, on the bad side nvidia is not really into open source at all i mean their drivers are closed source and you have to use them if you want to be able to game on linux um they don't do a very good job of playing oftentimes with uh you know developing and in, in, uh, interoperability with like the Linux kernel or anything like, like AMD is open source their drivers and it's basically in the Linux kernel I mean you just download it you already have it um, so there's yeah a, but we go ahead yeah sorry uh, people say that about Nvidia but I mean it, it's their intellectual property um, let, let's say if um, AMD were the leader 
Do you think AMD would like NVIDIA getting hold of some of their source code? I, but as you say, they don't really play nicely, but it's the price you pay. Neither does Apple, and look, look where Apple is. Yeah. Well, NVIDIA and Apple are, are going to have to um, talk, so to speak, aren't they? Yeah, it'll be I'm interesting just, to see how that plays out. <laughs> I was just amazed. <laughs> Really, roughly came out the blue because I was still like really know how, how interesting it'll be with Apple um, g- going um, onto the ARM based in their um, PCs and I think they do with the iPads anyway mm-hmm. um, just be amazed exactly how much Apple will squeeze out of every last um power of it i mean obviously it doesn't take a lot of power which is the main reason why it's amazing and it's readily available and everybody well what 95 percent of fo- smartphones would probably use arm mm-hmm. yeah but the, the apple thing will be interesting i mean you, you make a good point about their intellect their ip and stuff man i i can see i mean i'm not totally against proprietary so it's just that um I, I mean, Intel has a whole bunch of proprietary stuff, and they still play well with the Linux kernel and stuff. So, I mean, it's not as if it can't be done and still keep your stuff proprietary. Yeah. Um, I mean, th- there's that one way of looking, but there's also the the one area, I mean, outside of the Apple thing, because Apple basically has just licensed ARM and then completely done their own design on top of it. Um, other yeah, companies yeah. just basically use the standard ARM designs, right? One thing that ARM hasn't traditionally done well is GPU. And NVIDIA mm-hmm. obviously does really well with graphics processors. Um, so it would be interesting to see how, if they can somehow bring those things to, you know, together and, and get ARM up to speed in terms of, of you know, graphical processing and stuff. I mean, really what this is going to be doing, I mean, it, it, ARM's, uh, you know, ARM chips are big in phones, but really where they want to take them is servers because they can just shove tons and tons of cores i was reading yeah. something on like it might have been pharonix or something like that there was like a like a, a 1200 core processor or something that they put in a server because and it was based on arm and this can just run you know trillions and trillions of operations or whatever and that's mm-hmm. really where arm is gonna you know kind of take over the server poor intel i mean intel's getting getting you know um on one losing, side you got you know, losing yeah you got AMD going with Ryzen, and then they're going to have ARM in the server. Poor Intel. Um, anyways. Um, uh, but, I mean, go ahead. following on from your point there with the servers, <clears throat> I mean, obviously there's some ARM servers, but could you imagine, like, in uh, people's IT rooms where they've got all the server racks and everything and they've got to keep it super cooled? Can you imagine if all that was ARM? Taking up probably about a, t- a tenth of the space and just not running anywhere near the temperatures and the cost in, to cost to the environment. Yeah, it'd be, it's, it'd be good. It'd be interesting to see how this affects Raspberry Pi. Cause, all right, so you have Raspberry Pis, right, Martin? Those aren't specific. Sev- several. <laughs> those, those are just a risk-based architecture, or, the, or do those actually use an ARM processor? I'm not sure. I don't know. Um, it's ARM. I might well be corrected, but, yeah, it, it's ARM that they run on. Uh, but what I was amazed was I didn't even realise that uh, NVIDIA went down. It, it's not a single board computer, but it's just as good as. Um, and it's called uh, the Jetson Nano, and they released it. It's, it's a four gig version. Uh, I think it was $99, but what are you going to buy? A, a $50 Raspberry Pi or a $100 NVIDIA? Yeah. But the interesting thing is, at the end of the month, um, they've trimmed it back and they've knocked it down to two gig. They've done um, development courses online. You can and do this and do do that with it. And it's going to be $59. Uh, it comes with the NVIDIA Tegra X1 chip. It's got LXDE installed with Open back Box Manager, so that'll be nice and light anyway. Um, but... As you say, it's going to be interesting with the, the power Nvidia's got with the GPU could be compute and the ARM base. If if they could just meld that together and get that working, which I'm sure they will, it could just revolutionise, just revolutionise the, the whether it's a single board or desktop 
ideally with laptops and things like that. It's, it, it can only go two ways, really, but they're not, they're not playing games, really. <clears throat> I mean, SoftBank paid 32 <clears throat> billion, I think it was four years ago. Nvidia's came in with 40 billion and stocks and this and that. But I, I don't think SoftBank particularly wanted to sell them, just the climate they're in at the moment. I think they'd heavily invested in Uber and a couple of other people before all this um, kicked off. So I, I think it was more. Um, getting a bit of return for their investors yeah it was really shocking to me that it wasn't apple that bought them i mean i understand why they did yeah. it because of the <laughs> the regulatory stuff because they probably wouldn't have got approved because of the monopoly and whatever um but it, it, it didn't even look like they were interested in buying them at all which is it, i mean it just i figured that they would at least have looked at it but I mean, yeah. then Apple. Bought, I mean, I mean, we go on and about, on about how this might affect the Nvidia purchase might affect, you know, other people who use ARM. If Apple had bought them, it would have just been the end of anyone else using the platform because they're not gonna oh, keep well, licensing it to yeah. other people. It'd be, it'd just be, well, it'd if be Apple, Apple, well, if Apple bought ARM, then you can imagine how much a Raspberry Pi or something like that would be. <laughs> yeah. Mean, the, the, They'd still obviously license it because you've got a captive audience, haven't you? You're not going to say, oh, no, you can't have that. But they'd definitely put the price of licensing up. It's Apple, isn't it, really? Good products. I'm not, I'm not against Apple, but it's a premium product, and it, it's yeah, quite a, very expensive. a price you pay. Um, I, another way of looking at the NVIDIA thing is that this will spur development for arms in terms of software and maybe the linux kernel and all that kind of stuff and the more process more development you have on risk based architectures yeah, that will really help the open source chips makers like risk 5 and other ones like that um kind of get started off because I'm not, I really the chip design is only, is like half the problem but the other half is always getting software to run on those things um, so if, we, if now the ARM may become more mainstream in the uh, like actual computing space and just not on phones, it, it's possible that other open source risk architectures have the opportunity to become a little bit more mainstream. I mean, not really mainstream, but you know, more popular at least. Yeah, I mean, hopefully Nvidia will, will realize. I mean. We've got army of developers out there um, using ARM and, and giving up their time for free. I mean, Microsoft's realised it eventually. <laughs> I mean, there was the enemy, God knows how many years ago. But yeah. even Microsoft are coming round to it because it's, they just know there's that many people out there. Like, oh, you don't have to worry about Linux because it, it doesn't break all the time like Windows. Yeah, because you've got thousands and thousands of people testing these reporting it the community is brilliant uh, could you ever imagine uh, dropping microsoft an email to fix a bug or anything like that huh. microsoft aren't particularly bothered about the home user they are guinea pigs and i've been a microsoft user for years and years and it does what it says and that's about it but linux have got like soldiers and soldiers of people that actually sit there report bugs um it's too Two-way conversation, people are readily available, developers, you bundle. they know exactly, they're, well, they're testing the stuff for us and, and, and actually be able to write code to fix things and update things. It, it'd be interesting if NVIDIA does embrace this. I mean, they'd be crazy not to. Right? It's, it's free workers, isn't it, essentially? Yeah. It'd be interesting. The, oh, my only... Uh, the really big thing I can see going bad with this is if they if this do, the, the deal does go through, and they decide that they're gonna be like Microsoft was ten years ago and just decide to sue anybody who uses Risk, you know, to develop their own chips so um, without licensing mm -hmm. it. I mean that's it's completely yeah. possible. Yeah. I mean, Google Google did that with uh, a lot of things. Microsoft has done that before trying to stamp out Linux. Um, so I mean, it's there's a possibility for this to go terribly, terribly wrong, and all the hope and flowers that we you know, we've been talking about you know, might not actually go through because who knows. Um, anyway, so why don't we go ahead and jump into our apps of the week, Martin? Why don't you talk about your app? 
Yeah, could I just say one more, yeah, one more point that I, I haven't really saw um, readily available? Um, with like Telsa and your new breed of smart cars that use ARM, didn't Telsa kick NVIDIA off their books? So now Telsa's going to have to deal with NVIDIA. Yeah, be, I, I don't pay much attention to smart cards because I can't I can afford one if I wanted to. Um, oh, gosh, no. It, it was all down to like the AI and NVIDIA was probably did some underhand dealings, but Telsa just turned around and, and kicked them off the project and it stuck with ARM. And now it's come round that um, NVIDIA's bought them, so, so that'll be interesting. Yeah, it will be it will be interesting. Right, sorry, back to app of the week. Right, uh, my app this week's um, called Mellow Player. Now, this is an audio and video player um, which focuses on uh, your cloud music, YouTube, uh, Disney. No, it might not be Disney. Sorry, I haven't got it open. Uh, definitely Netflix. Um, it's basically a containerized um, page. Just open it up. You can pick your favourites, log in, um, deselect what you don't want. So you've just got it there on one click instead of having one for Spotify, one for YouTube, all that. Um, so, I mean, you've got uh, YouTube, Deezer, Google Play, um, various others. You've even got Pocket Casts, which is a favourite of ours. So you can have it all in one stop shop. Um, I'll leave a link in the notes. Um, to use it with Spotify uh, Netflix, uh, because of DRM, you will have to de- download We Divine prop. Pop that like link in down below as also. How about you, Matt? What what you got for us this week? All right, so <clears throat> I'm starting to learn Python, and I've been trying to get away from VS Code. So in use a bit more so uh, this is actually is in an app it's a a, some users configuration file for neovim he's basically gone through and put all the plugins you need in order to make uh vim the perfect um ide so you know it has coc which is your auto completion and surround and tabs and all the kind of stuff that you would see in a graphical um uh, IDE, it's all in Vim, so you can use your your key bindings and stuff that you're more used to in Vim. So that's what I've been playing around with. Uh, if I, I'm not like if you watch YouTube, like Vim users, they like fly around on the computer and or on their keyboard sure. and they just like, oh look at this, <laughs> I've just edited ten thousand lines all at once and I'm awesome. Like I can't do that. I'm not the. Uh, I'm still a noob when it comes to Vim, but this is very. Uh, I mean, it's just all put together and I didn't have to do anything. So I'm very much into taking other people's config files and then making them my own, which is kind of, I think is what a lot of people do for when, when you're using Vim and window managers and stuff like that. You just take other people's and then kind of mold it to whatever it is. Cause that way you don't have to start from scratch. Cause I tried to start from scratch oh, yeah. and it's not good. <laughs> you know, it's not easy. So anyways, that's mine. It's uh, it's by a guy named Christian. I can't say his last name. Shiruli, maybe I don't know. It doesn't matter. The link will be in the show notes. It's on GitHub. It was really easy to install. You just create a nvim file in dot in your dot config folder and uh, git clone this and start up and neovim and it installed everything right for you. It was all automated. It was very easy. So what would you use that for? It's okay. I'm not not that high level. Well, you can. Yet. I've just it, done a couple of scripts. That's about it. Any type yeah. of program you want, you know, from Bash to Python to uh, HTML, CSS, anything basically, any type of programming or coding that you want to use it for. Um, it's also cool for if you get into window managers. A lot of times, but basically, the, the the best thing I've noticed from is that it uses COC. That's a Vim plugin, and if you're in like a like say you're in an i3 config or BSPWM or whatever, it will go through and it will see all the um, things you put in there. And if you have to type in that thing again, it will give you a pop-up of the things you you have in there that are close to what you've just typed, and you can auto-complete it. So right. that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and that's not something that Vim offers out of the box. You have to use plugins in order to do that. Basically, this isn't like a this guy hasn't created created anything. It's just he's gone through and compiled all of these uh, uh, plugins that allow your Vim to be so much more extensive, ext- extended than it would be uh, you know out of the box. 
Um, oh, cool. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm I'm really looking forward to beginning my Python journey. Um, I'm not a good coder, but I like playing around with it. <laughs> anyways, if uh, so, anything else uh on your menu for today, Martin, or are we set to go? No, I think that's all good. Uh, what's the topic we're going to choose next week? Oh, right, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Thank you for reminding me. Our next one, let's see if I should have had this open beforehand, but that's okay. Um, preparing. It's uh, the dangers of Linux elitism. This is your topic. Yes, um, yes. So you'll get to put in the th your ideas and stuff like that into the show notes so that we know what kind of the direction we're going. Anyways, that is, uh, yeah. th that'll next be uh, next week. The dangers of Linux elitism. Linux is awesome. Windows is terrible. Don't use don't use Windows. Uh, anyways, that'll be a topic next week. Uh, just to briefly, if you want to subscribe to us, make sure you do so on YouTube, on Anchor, and Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, and all that stuff. You can find all those links at thelinuxcast.org. If you want to support us in other ways, you can follow us on our social media links, which we gave at the beginning of the show. So that is... But it's for us this time. We'll see you next week. Excellent. Thanks, man. Take care, guys. <laughs>